you for joining us for the Auburn Medical Group YouTube channel where we talk about hypothyroidism. hypothyroidism. Yeah, that's the plan for today, I guess. After after <laughs> what a day this was, your first day back for a while. Yeah. And, um, and I'm, yeah, not, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it next week or not. We'll see. It depends on how the timing goes, whether we'll be here next week or not. So, but good to have all of you join us. And yeah, thank you. We, yeah, you too. And we. <laughs> I'll say we, thank you to them. We, <laughs> We, we have the phone working. You can call through Skype using the Skype ID that's in the description. Yeah. Oh, and people you, already have a bunch of questions you, coming up. Oh, well, okay. Should we should we go to that first rather uh, than... Uh, I'm just saying that. Just giving just me saying, an update. Are they, do they have I'm to do with hypothyroidism? They do, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, well, what do we have? Let's, so Suzanne says, this live start. stream was made for me. As I just found out, I don't only have for hypothyroidism. You. I have Hashimoto's autoimmune disease. Excellent. Let's, uh, yeah, we're, oh, we'll bummer. talk about that. Hashimoto's. Sure. Not excellent. Bummer. But yeah, we'll yeah, talk about that. Yeah, it's not cool that you have People Hashimoto's. People say, what is Hashimoto's? And we'll definitely get into that. Okay. Um, uh, who's Doing that? IVF. Somebody had some thyroid that was low and they put her on tablets. Yeah, that can happen. So that was that was Suzanne. This is uh, Bianca says that she had some problems during um, IVF for pregnancy. Wow. I never, I never um, imagined that. I guess so I should have, though, because hypothyroidism is so, common. is so common. That's why I wrote a post on it, because it okay. is very, very common. So, Good call, Dr. Gwynn. Um, Dorothy Faulkner, I have hypo. I'm assuming thyroidism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that could be a lot of things. <laughs> uh, what are the tests for it and the symptoms? Yeah, I guess everybody just wants to know about it, so we should uh, okay. well, I, hop right in. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a lot of people that... Uh, so we're interested to in a topic that's apparently, you know, it's just so it's, bread and butter. And, and Yeah, you know, we see it so much. It's and, very and for the most common. part, it's just so routine. That right. You, you, you treat it till you get the levels right and you're good. You recheck them routinely and occasionally you adjust it. Yeah. There's there's not a lot of drama to yeah, not hypothyroidism. Really. Right. It is, it is practice. a uh, kind of a boring disease, I guess you could say, but... But when you're the one with it, obviously, well, yeah. that uh, yeah, affects, well, it's you affects you your life and you have your symptoms living with it. it. But in, in our lives, yeah. we see it a lot, and um, it is part of our everyday practice. I yeah. probably, probably uh, two or three patients today I can think of that have it. Yeah. It's just not the patients I was seeing. So, yeah, it's, it's very common. Yeah. So I worked with it with a patient today, um, just this morning. Did I ordered a TSH for annual monitoring. I did too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> then up. So it happens a lot. So so where to start? Uh, how about let's start with um, basic function. You probably should oh. know how the thyroid works. What is a thyroid? What um, is it so do? yeah, the thyroid is a gland that is at the base of your neck. How kinda. many of them do we have? Right. <laughs> so there's only one. Do they thyroid. come in pairs? <laughs> right behind it, there's a the parathyroid, but those uh, kind of but control your not... calcium. That's different. That's not a pair of thyroids behind the thyroid. No, parathyroid. Uh, they they control <laughs> you calcium said it levels. Again. <laughs> A parathyroid. <laughs> it kind of sounds like it, huh? But but the thyroid, yeah, is this big gland right at the at the base of the neck. It, if you've ever seen um, anybody with like goiter, that is a thyroid. A goiter is an, uh, a swollen thyroid at the base of the neck where you get this. Well, uh, how how do you know it's not just a double chin? <laughs> um, There's a way to tell. They're from Africa. <laughs> oh, whereas in we don't really see it in Asia. North America. The goiter. Usually, yeah. You, you can see them in North America. You can, but it's not Particularly as Particularly the uh, northern Midwest, I believe. Is Great, where they uh, are the, Great uh, Lakes States area, I think, is. Yeah. So um, iodine deficiency is usually what causes the hypo, or sorry, the goiter in uh, the um, the one seen in Africa and those places. Um, some other local And before iodine places. was regularly replaced. Put in or, salt. Uh, what's the word for iodized it? Iodized salt. They put it in, um, like the vitamin D in the milk. Yeah. There's a word for it where they just throw it in. Um, Fortify. Fort that's a word. Before we had fortification with um, iodine. And, and apparently it was a problem with the area around the Great Lakes, that there wasn't a lot of natural iodine in the soil. And so there would be a higher incidence of goiter. Yeah. And hypothyroidism. And, you know. Right. So, so the way the thyroid works is that it produces a hormone uh, called thyrotropin or T4. Um, is, is kind of a quick way to think of it. Um, and that the uh, the four, I believe, just stands for how much iodine is connected right. to it. Uh, so so it's released as T4 and travels around the body as T4. And then on the uh, when it gets to the tissues, it actually releases one of those uh, iodines and becomes T3, and that's the active form of thyrotropin. Um, 
and uh, and the thyroid is stimulated by the pituitary, which is this little um, uh, gland in the middle of your head, literally like the middle of your head, yeah. um, that produces a uh, another hormone called TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. So, so it's got this nice feedback mechanism. So the pituitary will produce this TSH, which then stimulates the thyroid to produce the free T4. Free T4 um, hits the pituitary saying, hey, we've got enough and, and we'll um, regulate it so it keeps it at the right level. So a nice little feedback mechanism. And for some reason, we trust the TSH level to tell us what's going on more than the hormone itself. Why is that? Why do we get TSH levels instead of T threes or T fours? So, or both? so they can be so as the uh, free T or sorry, the T four is circulating in your um, system. Uh, a lot of it is actually attached to um, uh, proteins. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you have to get a free T four, um, but uh, it's it's a little uh, more complicated. Meaning not attached to proteins. Right. Yeah. That free from the proteins, um, and that'll give you an accurate accurate thyrotropin level. Um, and then T three does not have that much play in getting that level, but the TSH um, is very, very responsive to those levels and, and will go up or down. Um, so that's why we measure that. It's a, it's, uh, I think it's probably the first test we had for thyroid and it's a very, very accurate test um, because we've, we've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Um, so it really tells you what the body's idea is of how much thyroid activity is going on because regardless of the level, <clears throat> You may need a little more, a little less, but the pituitary gland is making that call right. and deciding how much TSH to put out. Now, it's possible for there to be something wrong there. Right. You can um, have a normal free T4 and an elevated TSH in a condition called subclinical hypothyroidism. Uh, the, the clinical significance or how that affects people is not fully understood. Um, and, and sometimes we treat depending on how high that TSH level is or how the person feels. So you can have a completely normal free T4 or circulating normal as in um, the levels that they're giving you on the lab, normal in that range, but your body sees it as low and increases your TSH. Interesting thing about the so-called subclinical hypothyroidism where the patient is not having symptoms, but if you look at the numbers, they're a little off. Not huge, just a little. Um, and, and so we don't treat it because you're just putting the patient at risk for side effects and taking a medicine they don't need if they're not having symptoms. But I just came across an article today in preparation oh. for this. But well, you're smarter than me. Latino children <laughs> what with subclinical Latino? hypothyroidism also tend to have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's a correlation there, huh? Which comes or first? causation. Don't know. <laughs> Or even, or, or, or even it, if one causes the other, they may both be from, even, yeah. yeah. But just a, a curious article I came across. On that's, a, that's interesting. Somebody looked into that and did not know that. So they're doing more research to try yeah. to figure out what the significance of that is, if it's something we need to know. So, or, uh, somebody asked, what is a normal TSH level? Uh, it's probably variable depending on what your lab to five says. Or? But yeah, that's about the range. So, like 0. 0.45 to 4.5. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's about there. normal. Um, so, so yeah, every lab is different. Yeah, check so the it, lab. It depends on um, yeah. on the lab that when your, the your comes doctor is in, using. There's a they give you a reference by it, and, and we go by that. We don't go by a number. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because their labs change from time to different. time. And right. So uh, that's basic function. What does the thyroid do? Why do you need thyroid hormone in your body? I think it regulates metabolism. You think? Which is just like the most generic thing you could ever say. Yeah. What's that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? I, I uh, explain it to people saying it's kind of like the idle in your car. If you're, if you're driving the car Adjusting and it's, the... Yeah. Taking that yeah, so... And adjust, do, you, they do, that, do they do that anymore? They don't have car radar do cars, so I don't know. know. Actually, they probably don't. It's probably another way to do it, like I by think a I remember that from auto shop in high school. <laughs> I, um, but yeah, the, the idle will kind of, if you have a high idle, um, you know, it's kind of revving and running through gas and using things a little more quickly yeah. or a low idle, it's just kind of chugging and barely making it. So that's kind of how I explain kind it. Kind of, yeah. Um, but, uh, so you can get symptoms from those. So we can move on to symptoms from where your thyroid is. If you have a low thyroid, it hypo means- Hypo thyroid. Hypo low There's a really thyroid. good YouTube video about that. Oh, and, uh, and we should uh, quickly go back to that TSH level. Uh, it runs opposite. 
So if you have a low thyroid, your TSH is actually gonna be elevated because your body is trying to make up for that low thyroid level by yep. producing extra TSH. So, so it correct. runs opposite of what it is. So, um, so that can be a little so confusing. So high is low and low is high. Exactly, yeah, for the TSH. Um, little, okay. little confusing, but um, okay. that's how it is. So uh, symptoms, so if you have low thyroid, um, everything kind of slows down so you can, um, just kind of feel tired and fatigued, um, drained all day, want to take an afternoon nap all the time, um, just not have the energy that you're used to. And these can be very, very subtle. Gain um, weight. You can gain weight because your metabolism's not um, burning calories Thickening as much. Thickening of the skin, coarsening yep. of the hairs. Yep. Um, constipation, things not moving through the uh, bowels as much. A slower heart rate or bradycardia as it's called. Depression of both mood and mentation. Yeah, yeah, you can just feel slower. It you actually just not, makes you dumb. Not think as quickly, yeah. and and that can and also depression with that. It yeah. can have some psychological effects. So sometimes um, I will check a TSH and, and yeah. some people who are depressed. Uh, um, and it's to, a really cool thing when you treat it and fix them. Yeah, back with, to yeah, and, that, and that's pretty amazing. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, they have some other symptoms. But you can also get fatigue with hyperthyroidism. You're right. Yeah, it can Strange. just kind of wear you out. How's that happen? So, so in hyperthyroidism, it's the opposite. So all those things we said, it's the opposite. So your heart's running faster. You get diarrhea. Um, you can sweat. You can get jittery and shaky. Um, and and you can just feel like you're going a, a thousand miles an hour all the time, and that can wear you out and then make you tired. You're using up your body's fuel. exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're using it all up. So burning it. Um, yeah, and they can you can lose weight. Um, not not a recommended way to lose weight. No, no. <laughs> don't although, don't start taking thyroid although, hormone just to lose weight. Let me throw weight. this in here. Somebody was asking about what what are normal levels. If somebody has a a thyroid in the normal level and they're on thyroid medicine, they're already on it. This is who I do this with. If I have a patient who's in the normal range, but they're really, really, really high in the normal range, but still in the normal range, and they are having difficulty losing weight, I will go ahead and just bump them to the next dose up of the thyroid medicine. They'll still be within the range. They'll just be down toward the other end of the range and it yeah. helps them to lose weight. Yeah. So um, I, I, a lot of endocrinologists actually advocate for running that TSH closer to the lower level as long as your free T4 is still running in the normal level and it's not starting to go up because then you can start to get more symptoms. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're checking T4s if you're pushing. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. You've got to watch that, um, if, if you st especially if you start to suppress that TSH down below the normal level. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. We, and we don't like to go below normal because then really. you're putting at risk for heart all problems. The, yeah, all the high thyroid issues. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. is easier to get in trouble there than with hypothyroidism. That's why if I have, yeah. if I have subclinical hypothyroidism, they're a little bit elevated on their TSH. Um, but but they're they say, yeah, I, I, I'm happy with it. I, I, which makes me wonder why I got the test if, <laughs> if there's no symptom. What? Oh, you'll, there's, yeah, uh, cholesterol. Yeah. You'll get it for that. Yeah, um, sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's some other things. People are saying, uh, I think I have all of these. Wow, all these symptoms. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, talk to your doctor Doesn't that about happen it. every time you listen to a medical show? You <laughs> yeah, have whatever yeah, it is they're talking that, that's a, That reminds me of medical school and some of the patients. Three thumbs. Some, hey, <laughs> I have that. What? Uh, <laughs> whatever that is. Uh, who's got two thumbs in? Um, so that, that reminds me of... <laughs> so... so Kind of a common joke in medical school, and maybe you found this too, is there's always this one one uh, student that has like everything. Like you go, <laughs> did you have a, 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 any students like that? It was spouses of students. Spouses, for, there you yeah. go. Yeah, we had some people yeah. who would say, I've got that. And they'd start doing all the research, like I got that, that, that. Yeah. Yeah. But it happened like every time. So you just get to a point where you're I think like, it's worse, yeah, like pre-med. But they don't maybe. have as much access to actual medical information. <laughs> um, yeah, so they'll have like a little vignette in physiology class about something and... Yeah. Yeah. Or psychology. Yeah. Um, so one of the uh, very severe forms of hypothyroidism is a condition called myxedema or myxedema coma. Tell me about that. What's that? That's serious. Uh, that's where the thyroid is so low that the person, um, well, they can go into a coma. But yeah, they slow down it, so much. It can they actually can, kill a person. Um, yeah, lose consciousness. Yeah. So, yeah. I notice in your, in case people don't know, our topics often come from the Dr. Green Knight blog at drgreennight.com. There's a link in the description that you write weekly. Yep. Yeah, which you should check out. Excellent. And subscribe to. Yes. <laughs> uh, you didn't mention... What did I miss? Um, cretinism. 
Oh, no, I didn't. Cretans. I, I kind of, um, because that's more um, kids, I was uh, uh, focusing more on adults and what okay. we see. Um, yes, cretinism is a, um, uh, a congenital form of hypothyroidism. So babies that are born with little to no uh, thyroid function and they come out smaller and um, just uh, de developmentally delayed in all aspects, physical and mental. Um, they have a look to them too. Yeah, yeah, they do have like a FLKs, syndromic, yeah. yeah, syndromic look to them. Uh, we don't actually don't see it that much in. I've never um, seen it. Yeah, uh, so in the United than, States, it, it happens yeah. in, uh, overseas, but um, I've never seen it. I've only seen pictures. Um, so, yeah, that's why I didn't even mention it. Cre uh, but Cretan, yeah. uh, Cretan, referring to a, a person from the island of Crete. I did not know that. It it's apparently there, somebody huh? thought ill of people from the island of Crete. And so it became an insult to call somebody a Cretan. I didn't know that. But because yet, they look funny? But because <laughs> these, these people are so developmentally delayed, they were called Cretans. That's where that comes from. Yeah. Uh, so that person who commented that saying they thought they, thought all, they thought they had all these things, they were sorry for commenting. No, we weren't making fun of you. We were actually just making a joke. Sorry. It was not directed at you. It was directed at... <laughs> Everybody like you. No. <laughs> Everybody like what? We're gonna just offend Wait, all you, of our are you, viewers. Are you, <sighs> how can you there sit there? Okay. I'm trying to be the diplomatic one. We're way. laughing with you. Yes. Not at you. Yeah. Yeah, with you. Oh. We have all these people with their messages being retracted because they don't like what you're saying. <laughs> they're taking they're, their messages they're back. They're taking all their messages away. What? Really? Look, look what you're doing. Are you guys it's probably it? me. It's, it's the not. same person over and over. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a more... Anyways. I, don't worry. You're not alone. I actually had this experience clinically today. <laughs> I'm packing my bags and going well, elsewhere. I'm leaving. Okay. It happens sometimes. It's mutual. <laughs> it's mutual. <laughs> don't let the door hit your butt on the way out. Oh, my goodness. Ah, Suzanne said, they joke, they joke. Thank you, Suzanne. Yes. Yes, we, no. we like it. I really fun, didn't mind this guy leaving. It's, it's a fun medical <laughs> show. <laughs> How could we I not have fun if we don't if okay. we don't read your comments that, and, and reply to them? That's actually something that people every once in a while you'll get somebody who apparently doesn't watch us and they'll <laughs> comment. So those sorry, I, I, what are you apologizing for? So sorry, not like, sorry. Like on the procedure videos <laughs> where you get lots of comments, people will comment about what us is your problem? joking about stuff like it's inappropriate or something. Um, that's what this channel is. If, if you're here for sorry. serious discussions and sorry, not sorry, you know, want to cry afterwards because it's such serious stuff, <laughs> then go to another not, show. Leave our channel, you. please unsubscribe. Oh, man. That's not Judith, us. Judith Meyer says, I'm a nurse, not offended. I don't retract. Oh, she's going to lay it on the line. There, there. you go, Judith. Put okay. it out there. Judith, you're work. welcome to call on the, on the <laughs> you, Appreciate it. You'd, you'd be fun. Because as a nurse, she would have seen people in nursing school who went through the same thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. We, don't, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're just names on a page to us anyway. So. <laughs> if we met but, you in the streets, we wouldn't know you. But you could be a voice. <laughs> but you could be if a voice call. on the show. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. We appreciate you watching the show. Wasn't it Bianca Dai who called? Yeah, it was. Where are you, Bianca? Where she was? Did, did I say? Uh, was Is she here today? Brio somewhere. Yeah. I thought I saw Bianca. Yeah, earlier on she was here. She hasn't really commented since. No. Anyways, yeah. all right. Back to thyroid. Where were we? We talked about myxedematoma, all the symptoms. We got the most di of the, the diagnosis is pretty easily made with a blood test. Major stuff. Um, treatment. That's the last thing it's we need. It's actually about. pretty easy. Yeah, so they're, so they're um, basically one form of treatment, uh, which is replacing the thyroid. Um, uh, levothyroxine is a synthetic form of thyroid hormone, which uh, mimics the thyroid hormone precisely. Uh, so there, there are minimal to no side effects, um, unless you uh, get off. I was going to say, that, other than from Unless than over-treating or under-treating. Under yeah. um, you get side effects there, but it's a it's a very safe medication. It does need to be taken first thing on the morning on an, first thing in the morning. Does it have on to be an morning? Empty stomach. Does it have to be morning? Well, it needs to be on an empty stomach, so maybe not in the morning. Okay. I guess that's just to remember. I don't know, but it needs to be on an empty stomach just because okay. of the absorption of it. Just wanted to there, challenge you there. Um, there is another form of medication called Nature Thyroid or Armor Thyroid. Not used that much anymore. Is I don't just ground really up use pig it. or cow thyroid. Yeah, it's essentially what it is. It's natural thyroid, uh, which is I a thought, ground up pork thyroid. I thought the FDA had a 
moratorium on using that because it's so variable. It's, yeah, it is variable. And it has really weird dosages where it's really tough to, to zone in and narrow yeah. in on the, on the correct dose. So I don't, I don't use it that often. Used to be, you may not have much memory of this, but it used to be that patients would just be all over wanting the armor thyroid and not wanting yeah. synthetic thyroid. Do you see that? Yeah. Not in if, Jewish people. In, what? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess it wouldn't be kosher, <laughs> would it? Well, they could get I don't, bovine. Bovine, there you go. No, I was just making it. I don't think there's um, a No, bovine. I just, I, I don't see uh, it as much anymore. Or, the people who I see who are on it have been on it for, you know, since it was used uh, more often. But now if you get something... You know, you're getting levothyroxine pretty much every time. Um, now, one thing about levothyroxine, uh, different brands can vary. Uh, I think I've heard plus or minus 5%. Oh, you mean like between as, Levoxyl and Synthroid? Yeah, as far as the so, micrograms or how much you're getting. So you should stick with the same brand. And often in this case, it's better to take a name brand than a generic. I was going to say, the only way you can do that is to write dispenses written, which is right. something I hardly ever, ever I do. I hardly ever do. And, and I even used to do it with thyroid a lot. Yeah, I, I don't do it as much as I used to. It's only people who I can't get, you know, I'm giving them a generic and, and they're just going all yeah. over the place. Those people will say, hey, you need to stick with the same brand. So, But most people do all right. Their thyroid is not that sensitive. All right. So, no so there you go. No calls. Any other really cool comments before we... You must take it two hours at least before other medications. Yeah, yeah they actually Suzanne do said. want you to have it totally separate from You're other right. medicines and... Not that every medicine is going to interact with it, but just so that the ones that do, you don't have them causing problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anything else now, really cool there? Oh, Real Ruler 2112 says, if I forget to take my thyroid in the morning and don't remember until evening, is it better to skip it and continue the next day or take it at night? That question is answered day? in the blog. It is. You should read it. You should read the blog. <laughs> we got to have something to... <laughs> got to get you there. Something yeah. to... Get you over there in. and read it. Yeah. Good job uh, on the blog, Gwing. Thanks. Appreciate Dr. it. Dr. Gwing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, and then you out. also have that little ad on the sidebar for a podcast called Changing Faith. I did. Because yeah. you, you have your, your faith-related uh, yeah, discussions of, now and then. Uh, a lot so. of uh, posts. Well, not a lot, but so, yeah. yeah. Occasional posts. Okay. Yeah. About well, that. So thank check you that so out. much. Hey, if you want to be on... Medically speaking, not medically speaking, right? Why did I say that? Wow. Auburn, Auburn Medical Group, that goes Are way back. Are you living decades ago? Living in the past. <laughs> medically speaking, right? That's another podcast you might have fun with. Although, yeah, you were a guest on that when you were a Let's see. Any resident. consideration for aller iodine allergy? I don't know how you could be allergic to iodine. Oh, that must just be like for contrast and like topical iodine, stuff like that. But iodine is actually a required element in the body for the thyroid to function. I'm glad so. you bring that out <laughs> because just like with the iodine, the whole mercury thing, oh, thy thimerosal is putting mercury in your body. Well, there's a difference yeah. Yeah. between different chemical forms of certain elements like iodine and mercury, and they're not all the same. Uh, people that don't understand chemistry, that, that just doesn't yeah. equate to them that... Yeah, sorry. And, um, you know, iron and rust are different and... <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Sodium and sodium salt are different. <laughs> Can be. Although yeah. when it comes to diet and trying to limit somebody's sodium intake... It's, no, I mean like there sodium that reacts with water. Oh, elemental, elemental sodium. Elemental sodium. <laughs> that, that explodes when it gets just moisture from the air. Yeah, that... That's different than salt, yeah. So, yeah, just know that. So Real Ruler has a joke for everyone. Oh, Everyone's okay. probably read it. Why do you joke. never want to borrow money from a leprechaun? They always come up a little short. All right. So, anyway, somebody was asking what the uh, the blog address is. That reminds Dr. me. DrGreenKnight.com, D-R-G-R-E-E-N-K-N-I-G-H-T.com. There's a link in the description. Check. Or... Click yeah, on the description it's below. Like, it's just right there. It's I so like spelling close. it out. Okay. For those of you who D can't see G but are watching this, who can hear my voice. <laughs> if you can hear my voice, you're going to lay hands uh, on the microphone. Oh, man. Okay. Thank you so much for joining yep. us. Who do you want to thank? Thanks, Boo Boo Kitty, for supporting the blog. Appreciate it. You make it happen. Yep. And do you have I'd anybody? like to thank my mother. Thanks, Grandma. His mom's my grandma. We do appreciate you, grandma. <laughs> and Lindsay Antoine. <laughs> yep. And you, did you say boo? I did. I did, I did say it. I said, I oh, said. Thank you. 
Thanks for joining us. Until next time, I'm Dr. Gwen Vaughn, Dr. Mark Vaughn, telling you to stay in good health.